name is Kelly Hello Quinn, and, and I'm a wildlife artist and educator living in Florida. The core things we'll be covering today include what platforms you should be on as an artist, how to utilize those platforms to grow your reach and your audiences, as well as some resources you can use for growth on all these platforms. Alrighty guys, so we're going to hop right into social media for artists. So we're going to cover quite a few things today, but we're going to start with our why. So this is everything that we're going to be covering. Um, not only are we going to do your why, we're also going to go over, of course, the top three social media platforms. Um, and not only why you should utilize them, but also how to utilize them with a few examples, as well as showing you a couple of other artists and creators who are utilizing these platforms to make a living. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in with our why. So creating a message for social media that resonates and that is super, super important because it's easy to start posting on social media and have no idea like why you're doing what you're doing. Like what are you going for? Why are you taking and spending all this time on this social media platform if there's not going to be any return? So you always need to make sure that you keep that in mind because it can at times be very easy to get consumed with social media. So be aware that, you know, likes don't mean that people like do or don't like your artwork. It's just a matter of how many people have seen it. Um, and so really what matters is if the few people who do like it when you're first starting out or messaging you want to purchase work and support your journey, then those are super amazing people that you really want to have so before you can attract the audience who will love your artwork, you also need to know how to speak about yourself and create copy that communicates why collectors should buy your work or follow your journey. And so again, I hit back home on that why so much because when I first started out, I didn't know necessarily why I was doing what I was doing. I just really loved nature. I really loved art. It's how I exp expressed myself, explored the world and shared it with other people. And I just grew, I just had a lot of enjoyment from that. But uh, as I you know, graduated and I wanted to make a living through my art form, I realized we had to start asking these hard questions. And I'm very lucky. I've had a lot of people who've spoken with me and who have been sounding boards for me throughout this journey. So I want to give you the opportunity to have that here with, uh, with me and, of course, everybody else here today. So one place you can start is do you have a special technique that makes your work unique? So a style you know, you have impressionism, do you mix two styles or you abstract, you know, those, I mean, those are pretty simple, straightforward ones, but they do matter once you answer all these questions together, they give yourself an idea of not only who you are, which is also really empowering, but also as a way kind of to create like a persona almost for maybe who your ideal collector would be or who would want, um, maybe who would be interested in your work based off the things that you wrote down. And then, of course, do you promote a social or environmental cause or any other kind of cause? Or are you part of some community event? Uh, is there something that you really love and care about? And then does your work donate to a mission you care about? This kind of goes along with the environmental cause, social cause. So these next few questions are more personal, obviously. So they're going to be, why are you an artist? Uh, you know, everybody has a very different question, a very different answer to that question. Um, me personally, I'm an artist who communicates science and education for the future. That's they try to keep it short and simple. Um, it also makes it easier for you to communicate that in your bio. So a lot of these things that, you're, that we're writing down here in this why section are going to be used for your bios. Um, and I know you're like, well, you probably already have an artistic bio. But in all honesty, a lot of those are too long and you really need to be succinct when it comes to these small section bios. Um, and then, of course, what do you care about? Again, that kind of goes along with the, all the things we were talking about. What does your artwork say? And, of course, that one is always up to interpretation, depending on who is viewing your work. But, of course, you personally know what you intended when you created it. And then this is a quote that I really love. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And what you do simply proves what you believe. Simon Sinek. He is a fantastic author. Uh, I would recommend reading all of his books applicable to anybody's profession. So the first one that we're going to be going over is Instagram. It is the number one platform hands down you should be on as an artist. And that's just because it is made for imagery. It's made for photography, um, artwork. It is beautiful. The tile format you cannot beat when it comes to displaying your work. For much of what I do in terms of uh, working with brands, working with nonprofits, uh, as well as with galleries. 
and even with clients. I get I probably would say over 60% of my commissions come through my Instagram and either through a direct DM or because somebody's seen a piece that I've posted and, and they want to comment it on it, we're interested, I reached out to them immediately through DM, um, DM is direct message, and just had a conversation about what they were interested in. So it's as simple as that, but you definitely need to be on there consistently and often, especially when you're growing. And so I'll also be going over some of the resources, including like pods, hashtags, and ads, how to use those as I go through Instagram and kind of show you not only my Instagram and kind of how I've utilized a couple of things, but also one or two other artists who are using it as well. And then know that stories, Insta TV and Reels, though they are all very, very similar because they're all video based formats and they're also all vertical. So keep that in mind. Stories are more like really fast, quick, snap a pic, share it. Um, it's great for keeping in touch with your audience. Even when you're not posting a main post every day, it's very important to leave, try to post at least a couple times. Um, I'd say probably at least four days, five days a week. And Insta TV, you don't really, you can choose to be on Insta TV or not be on it at all. Insta TV though is a good choice because Instagram currently is wanting to promote more video on their platform because they're trying to outcompete TikTok as well as compete with YouTube. So th there seems to be indications that uh, the algorithm favors video format right now on Instagram currently. And then, and that also Insta TV is a more longer format, so you can have up to an hour long video on there. Whereas on stories, it can only be 15 seconds. And then of course with reels, that is also 15 seconds, but it's much more of like a mixtape version of stories. This is my Instagram page. I have 23.1 followers and it is taking me nearly six years to accumulate that follower count. And this is all or done organically through using the platform's tools such as ads, hashtags, and interacting with brands and organizations and other people to support each other and uplift each other's stories. So I'm going to be only talking about ways that you can do things organically. Of course, you can also promote on social media for growth now um, through paid ads. I would be careful with that. It's easy to get a lot of fake followers um, and it's also you'll start to really attract a lot of the, um, they're kind of, they're like basically like robot profiles that will reach out to you and ask you to pay like $15 or $25 for a post on their like 100,000 and 200,000 follower page. And the thing is a lot of those um, pages, they just don't, they're not real followers that are following them. They're just paid fake followers that make you believe that you're going to be getting your artworks out somewhere. Um, don't do it. Overall, I would say never do it. <laughs> and um, so that's just a word to the wise there. Don't waste your time. And so right now, this is, I'm just kind of scroll down a little bit and show you an example. My tile feed is going to be totally different from your tile feed, as well as how my tile feed is going to be different from every single other artist's feed on here. And for me, I like to focus on, again, we came back to that why question. I like to talk about first, I'm saying, hey, my artwork is available in that first line right there. I say original sea turtle artwork available, DM for info. Totally cool, absolutely accepted, definitely do it. Um, and then of course I go into my mission and why, which is I start talking about Biscayne National Park, which in the particular was what I was the organization I was working on, uh, working with when I was creating a collection that this piece was a part of. And so I wanted to talk about that experience as well as what I learned about the environment and the Hawksbill sea turtle in Florida. So that is one way to be posting and I tend to put myself in my imagery because they just perform better. Um, and they get in front of more people. It seems to be that if there's a human figure in an image on Instagram, it just tends to perform better no matter what. Um, that is not a requirement by any means because if you come over here to my tile that has no person in it, it's just all about my artwork and my drawing right here, um, you can see that, again, no person in it and it's performed very, very well. Still at 1383. And I'm still sticking to my why. I'm talking about why am I drawing this? Why was it inspired? That kind of thing. And don't be afraid to be yourself, guys. Like, put in a little bit of humor in there. You know, have fun with it. Um, it's, it's your space, it's your gallery. Think about it as your online gallery. And Instagram is a great place to meet a lot of really awesome people who you can work with in the future as well. 
Now I'm going to show you another artist who I really love her work. Her name is Carla Grace, and she goes by Carla Grace Art on Instagram and Facebook. And if you can see here, like you can just go through and start scrolling through artists under certain hashtags to get inspiration for your particular style. Style. So I would say maybe come up here and type in hashtag watercolor art, watercolor art, watercolor artist, and see what your top performers are to get inspirations for hashtags and such like that. But why I'm showing her is because I love how she's completely 100%, I mean, about her artwork. Like she doesn't really talk about necessarily an environmental issue or a cause. It's really just about the perfection and her work and her hyper realism. And so this is an example how you don't need a mission or anything like that to sell your work at all. You just have to be dedicated to quality and to show it off. Um, and she does this really, really well. She has an adorable little baby. Um, and so this is just an example. You see like 6,000, 3,000, 3,000, 4,000. So she's working on um, these really detailed pieces pretty much consistently now. Um, I followed her before she was even like in the 20s. So it's been really cool to see her journey explode. So this is just one person who I would recommend checking out to see how they utilize um, sharing of education in terms of their art process because that's something I don't necessarily do that often um, where she basically focuses on it. So she really helps, like shows her knowledge by sharing it in all of these stories right here, which how that's one way you can use stories really powerfully to communicate even more depth about your work. Popping back to our Instagram resources, we're just gonna recap a few things. Instagram pods, I didn't talk about those yet, but these are basically engagement groups. They are not a specific tool you can use in the platform. They're a made up tool, basically um, a group of Instagrammers who support each other through liking and commenting on each other's posts, get together. Um, usually in a group message, like a direct message DM, you can tag multiple people and messages on Instagram. And typically that's how those um, kind of engagement groups start. And basically why they are like that is because the algorithm, specifically on Instagram, favors uh, posts, especially when you're trying to go for growth, that have a lot of active engagement in the first 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and you also need to make sure that whenever you are going on there um, and you see comments, reply to your comments before an hour is up because you will actually get boosted on the algorithm for being engaged with your audience. So there's some neat little tricks um, around using engagement groups and just in general having good etiquette when it comes to response with your Instagram posts. Um, I've never actually done an engagement group personally, but I've heard from others that it works pretty well, especially when you're just starting out. So that again is just because the liking and the commenting helps boost your post. And then of course you go on and exchange and do the same thing for someone else. So it seems like pretty good karma to me. So hashtags, if you don't know, are keywords that Instagrammers follow while ads allow you to directly reach specific Instagram accounts for a higher view rate. So whenever you're adding somebody, you're basically tagging a specific organization, person, or group. Um, and so they'll get a notification in their, like, little, in their little notification box saying that you've been tagged in something. I typically use this whenever I'm creating a scientific resource that I want um, some of our partners to use. So I'll, I will put in like any of the hashtags that are relevant. If it's about a shark scientific illustration, I'll put hashtag shark, shark art, shark, and just all the shark hashtags. And then I'll tag all of our partners in it. And so that is a great way to grow as well because um, that they will also sometimes reshare it, post it on their stories, post it on their main page. It's a great way to stay engaged with a broader audience um, by very intelligently, I might add, tagging people who are relevant to what you're posting. Another great, um, great, or just, no, excuse me. Another great thing to think about tagging would be brands that you use. So definitely tag brands if they're in the imagery. They will a lot of times respond, and it's a great way to get in contact, maybe with some of their reps, is through their direct messaging, asking if maybe you could try some stuff and share it. Usually, um, a lot of uh, these businesses are open to that kind of thing. That is, uh, those are my resources when it comes to Instagram. So let's go ahead and move on to LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is my number two platform and it has been a really great surprise to be honest. It's a great platform that is growing so fast and everybody on it is on there uh, as a professional. They want to collaborate, they want to work together or they're, you know, they definitely are having an income. Um, and so it is really important 
to think about LinkedIn when you're thinking of your social media strategy because it's going to give you over 260 million people who could potentially see not only your artwork, but your mission, your projects. And it also builds your credibility with your community and is a powerful platform creating easily viewed portfolios. So here we are on my LinkedIn main page. So we're gonna start with this bio. So obviously there's a big difference between the bios depending on what social media platform you're on. On Instagram, it's succinct, kind of colorful and playful. Um, and layered, you'll typically see because it's easier to read. So when it comes to LinkedIn, you don't necessarily need to worry about that. You actually want to utilize almost all of that keyword space because that's what it is. It's a bio, but it's really a keyword space, and that's super important for search. So whenever you type in somebody and you're searching somebody, you can be like, ah, I'm gonna look up an interior decorator or I'm, excuse me, interior designer. You'll, whenever you go to their portfolio when you go to their profile you'll see interior designer right there it's in their bio it's a keyword so LinkedIn uses all of these words that you put in your bio so that's why the bio I think is probably the most important thing when it comes to your LinkedIn page and obviously you want to have a beautiful representation of your artwork right here on this cover and then of course a very clear and um, similar image in your profile picture and of course, I wouldn't skimp on any info when it comes to your LinkedIn, put where you live. Uh, I would definitely put your, your email, put your phone number. Um, and then of course, once you get past your little bio, you come scroll down, you have your about. So this is where you would put your you know, artistic bio, I would say, go ahead and you know, just go all in, talk about what your work is, what inspires you. you know. Um, I would also maybe put a little blurb in there if you would like, like who you're looking to work with, as well as make sure you always include your info. So I have my email, I have my Facebook page, I have my website, and I have my portfolio site. And then after that, I like to feature some of my commissions, so this, um, or my originals, my really, I guess originals and work that I'm really proud of. You definitely wanna highlight here. And so you know, like whenever you go to this activity section, you see articles, posts, and documents. Uh, if you just type posts, you're only going to see your work, only the things that you've posted. So this is just an idea of some of the stuff I've posted. So here's one that has performed really well on LinkedIn. Um, and this is something I, when I first started using LinkedIn, I did not anticipate there being such a, an overwhelming enjoyment, I guess, of the artwork on this professional platform. I, it's As I come to find out, it's because not many artists are using it. Um, and so it's technically fresh content to a lot of people who are following, um, following me on LinkedIn. So it's very colorful, it's very bright. And I typically, again, I'm in the education space and I do a lot of work with universities and organizations. So I tend to highlight organizations, tag them on here. And it's a great way to build your, um, to basically build your connections in your community as well by in, on a professional platform, giving them a shout out. So I found this has really helped to uh, further relationships and connections. And something else I wanted to show, so these are just posts. These are normal posts, like how you would post on Facebook or Instagram. There's also articles. So articles are more like a portfolio type post here. So basically it's like a blog post. Think of articles as being a short blog post. So this is actually another great way I found to really show if you don't have a portfolio site, this is a great way to have a kind of pseudo portfolio site on a professional platform. Um, and you basically just make each of these little articles about your artwork and you can also do it about each project that you work on and such and such. So I, I really love LinkedIn. I definitely think you should be on it. So here's my LinkedIn resources. This one, you don't really have anything else you need to worry about. I did include hashtags on here because hashtags don't really support very much when it comes to post engagement on LinkedIn. It is not its main way of searching for things. It's more so through keywords in your copy or in your, pro in your profile bio. Last but not least is Facebook. It's my third platform. Um, it is really, on here because I think it has a really great local presence when it comes to work. I would not necessarily use this for a wider audience. And I'll get into that as we kind of jump into viewing through Facebook.
So Facebook is a platform best utilized for, again, building that local audience through those varying types of digital communities provided. Again, those are groups, um, events, and pages. And this is my Facebook page. Again, I am Kelly of the Wild across all of my social medias, and that's something that you need to keep in mind when you are creating all of these different accounts is that you wanna be consistent not only with your profile picture, but also with your name displayed and all of that. So, I've, um, I mean, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Facebook, at least on a personal basis. Uh, this is a Facebook page which is different from a normal profile. So a profile is just what you have as an individual who is utilizing Facebook to interact with friends, family, and see pictures. Um, a page is for a individual, a business, um, nonprofit, anything like that, that is wanting to have a presence that people can follow. And so you can actually now have your cover photo, you can connect to a you know, a shop link, and you can also change this link to something else if you want to have people sign up to your email. Um, it's pretty versatile when it comes to that. Um, so this is the first thing I'd like to say is whenever you are on a Facebook page, know that you can pin your post, like your favorite post or your video. So here I have my, my video that's like my artist video, my intro, and you know, as I welcome to everyone, I welcome to the wild everyone, more to come and I include my, my website link and it's just a little intro video. You can pin, I pinned this to the top just because that's the first thing I want people to see is almost be an invitation and like a hello, this is me kind of thing. And you can do whatever you want. You can pin a, a new original that you wanna highlight when somebody comes to your, um, to your page. You can even make it like an interactive experience where it's like every week, come back to my page and the first pinned post is the latest original artwork. So there's some neat ways that you can utilize this pen post. And again, so you just see, this is my post that I also showed you on Instagram. And if you have your Facebook and Instagram um, connected through your app, you will be able to post both of them um, at the same time. So basically you create the content for one and it posts to the other. Just be aware that sometimes apps, like you see right here, do not transfer over from Instagram to Facebook, which is unfortunate. So this is the business that Blake and I founded together. It's called Canvas of the Wild, and they're basically interactive art experiences. And why I'm on this particular page, um, because of course you can have multiple pages, which is really awesome on Facebook. As I go ahead and go over here to the events, obviously as you see here, no upcoming events. Um, but bad down here, you can see we've utilized events very heavily since we've begun. And let's just take a look at some of the things that you can do here. And I like this, again, this is for doing anything that is an event style, whether it be a paint class or it might be a, an event, like you're gonna be showing artwork at, um, at a gallery or you're gonna have a little studio tour or you're gonna do a live art workshop or something, anything, it doesn't really matter. And I think it's a great way to interact with your audiences. Next, we're gonna look at groups. And groups are super important for engaging with, again, that local audience. I keep saying it so many times, but it's, I cannot hit home on it enough that you should be using Facebook um, locally. And how you really do that is through groups. So group pages uh, tend to be created by like one to a few different individuals who created a, it's not a page, it's just because a page is a business or an individual that wants to, is, technically trying to make an income. Groups are meant to be more so like a, a sounding board, a place where people can go to chat and talk and share things that are local typically. So it's just a great place to think about, um, to find groups that are really niche or specific that you could post your artwork in or at least be a part of the conversation so that when somebody does see your artwork and they remember you, it's a bit less uh, friction between them being interested versus not. This is Facebook Marketplace. And Facebook Marketplace, I'm gonna be super brief with this because I personally am not very familiar with it. I more so just wanna to touch on it to let you know that it exists and that there is no harm in exploring new outlets for getting your artwork out there. I don't personally use it. I think it, it's typically more kind of like an eBay type situation, but definitely check it out and see what your options are. All right, hopping back over to our Facebook resources. This is kind of just a recap of everything we already talked about. Um, again, this, these pages were designed 
for to be official profiles for entities such as celebrities, brands, and businesses. We already went over that. Um, and how the groups break down into being more about communication and local community um, with a common interest in something. So those groups allow for you to become a part of that conversation and to be active in a community online until you're ready to maybe post artwork. Of course, there are rules about being in groups, so be sure to read those rules before you do post. Um, sometimes that's not allowed. So you just gotta find the right groups, but they're definitely out there and they're definitely worth the time. Um, again, events, love events. If you're hosting any kind of a live webinar or you're doing some kind of a launch, anything like that, events can gain, gain a lot of natural attraction on that platform, I've noticed, as well as if I had to pick anything to promote on Facebook, it would be an event. Um, and then, of course, the marketplace, as I mentioned, just showed you. Um, it's for you, any user who wants to post a product, a collectible, buy, sell, anything like that. It's very similar to eBay. Um, and the fact that you can, you know, get back with them and do a counter offer and kind of um, go through that process. But I, I would think that that would be better for smaller goods or products with your art on it, maybe like a t-shirt with your artwork or some other kind of product such as that. And I love this quote by Albert Einstein, creativity is contagious, pass it on. And so I was just kind of gonna go over one more little thing before we're all done. I'm gonna go over content creation ideas, and this is just a really quick thing, um, basically process, inspirations, and sharing. So I would, something I had a problem with when I first started was having content, uh, enough content to post consistently. You know, it doesn't sound like a problem until it is, but it is definitely something that I, to this day, still have to deal with and still need to be conscious of almost every week. So one way that I've been able to beat that away is by capturing the process. So capture the sketching stage of an artwork, capture the first brush stroke, capture some video, capture time lapse. And I think it's really great. Um, that, I, that's been a huge help for me as a content creator and posting consistently since all of the platforms boost you and your visibility um, if the more you post. Uh, and also something you should always note is that you can share other artwork and imagery from other artists or people who inspire you. Of course, just ask them if you can share it. Um, most people will say, sure, it's fine, as long as you tag me and hashtag. Um, and it's a great way to not only share with your audience, somebody else who you really love or the work or inspirations. Um, and it's a great way to pass along, you know, the good karma and that, uh, you know, that support for the artist community. And as we find out, uh, some of those people will actually reshare you as well and share some of your work as a thank you. So I find that to be a really beautiful, um, beautiful way to grow together with our community. Now, of course, don't be spammy with it. Don't, um, you know, use it all the time because then it just loses its luster. Make it like a once a week thing or a once ever so often. And then, of course, sometimes a nice quote is all you need, guys. If you aren't a daily journaler like type of person, that's cool. Um, but if you do, share some nuggets of inspiration from your thoughts with your audience. Let them get to know you. Open up about yourself. You know, obviously, I get you don't want to be totally all the way out there. I'm still a relatively reserved content creator. Um, I speak passionately about mission, about my mission, about the work I do, and the organizations that I work with, and the people and um, that I work with. And I really rather it be about something else other than myself personally. And um, but on the occasion, I do share some like little like goofy things and I, you know, just like something to kind of like touch base with everybody. So I think everything is totally perfect as long as it's true to you. And so that's just like some ideas about content creation um, and how to utilize thinking around creating content. And then finally, these are some resources. So I love resources, guys. They're super helpful. Um, the books I have mentioned here are things that have really helped to impact my career um, and my life, not just as an artist, but as an individual. So Deep Work by Cal Newport was really wonderful. It's a great, um, thoughtful perspective on flow. And so I think flow is super important to artists and creativity. That's one I would definitely recommend. Building a story brand kind of helps get your head more around the business aspects of having your own 
quote unquote brand or business. Um, same thing with the one page marketing plan. That's a really succinct, very short to the point marketing plan. That's really great as a bare bones. It's a starting point. It's definitely not your finishing point, but it's definitely something that can get you engaged with marketing if you have no experience with it. And it's really easily easy to consume. Um, start with why that was that first quote came from this book by Simon Sinek. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite books ever. Uh, this is recommended to me by Blake and I'm so happy that he did because it has definitely become a core to everything that I do and that um, we do together. So I really love that book. I definitely recommend it. Uh, Art and Fear by David Bales. That's a really interesting read. I think that's something that all artists deal with is that fear. I think that fear drives us in some ways. and. I think that you know being in tune with what drives you and why you are doing certain things and with your artwork or why you're not doing certain things with the artwork, I think that he does a very thoughtful kind of prose, talks about that a lot. Um, and then of course, the last one is Daily Painting by Carol Marine. And I think that this book has been a bit, had a huge impact on my content creation because before reading this book, I did not do daily paintings. I now do daily paintings. I've been doing them for almost four years now. And a daily painting doesn't have to be a painting. It can be a drawing, a sketch. Um, it can be anything, any kind of content. And so that's the way you should think about it when you read that book, if you do get to read it. Um, and it will kind of open your mind up to different perspectives and really kind of get into that learning mindset, which I think is super important for anybody to continue to have. And then finally, I have content creators. So these are all just content creators who I really love and I've followed for a, quite a time. Um, there's so many more guys. So all you gotta do is just look up hashtags and find artists and work that you like. Um, follow them, you can save them um, on Instagram specifically in like different galleries. And so that's fine. I find that really useful for when you're maybe a bit down or a little like out of your funk. Um, that's a great way to kind of get inspiration. So Carla Grace, I showed you earlier, um, I showed you her earlier as well as V Steiner, but Aaron Hansen um, and Amber and Rachel and Yellen, um, all of them are very successful artists. They all have a different niche and that's why I picked them. I wanted to share with you artists who took different ways of utilizing their artwork um, and using social media to make a living. And all of these women have excelled at that and have worked with top brands such as the Adobe Suite. Um, you have them working with um, large outdoor brands, um, putting them, their artwork on products, outsourcing their artwork to be put on products, and um, even in, as individuals, as Veronica has, she's uh, put her artwork on her own products and stickers. And so it's really a really beautiful look at many different ways that creators can make a living. So I recommend looking at all of them and definitely exploring even more of them. And of course, guys, I did not have it on here, but definitely check out that Adobe portfolio site. I'm telling you, it is definitely worth a look and to seeing if you, especially if you have the creative cloud, uh, you should definitely use it. Um, super easy to create and to use. It's very straightforward and it will tell you how to set up everything for you. So with that in mind, guys, I am so excited. I've had this opportunity to share these things with you and I really hope that you have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me.